this is an example for how the multi-sensor data fusion model is used. We're going to use a home security system as our example. With a home security system, you have a lot of different things. You have open and closed sensors, smoke detectors, glass breakage sensors, you have motion detectors, you might have CO detectors, carbon monoxide, and all of these are the actual sensors that we call level zero. This is the basic sensor that we get. Uh, and a simple two bedroom house will have an entryway with our front door, we'll have a living room, and it'll have a door, we'll have a dining room, a hallway, a couple of bedrooms, and we'll put a bathroom here, doors here, and then we'll have a kitchen. And then we have a back door. So we have a front door and a back door, two bedrooms, a bathroom, a living room, and a dining room. And we would have some windows. Well, this is our basic house. We would put an open close sensor on doors and windows. So we'll use O for the open close sensor. And we might also decide that we need a smoke detector in each of the bedrooms and we want a, a carbon monoxide sensor in the house and we'll put it in the central area and we'll call that C1. We might want some motion detectors just in case something happens with another sensor. This is level one now. So now we know that if a detector O3 goes off, it's a window or a door because it's our open and close. If detector M4 goes off, we know that it's a motion detector, somebody walked by. That's level one. For level two, we need to know where these sensors are. So let's start with the rooms. We'll start with the entry. And that has O1. And then the dining room that has O2 and M2. Kitchen has O4, O5, and M1. Bedroom 2 has S2, O7, and O8, and so on. This is level 2, where we've added the, the context of where, what sensors are in what room. Level three is based on our level two and level one stuff. If you remember, level one is just which sensors do we have and what do they mean? That's our data refinement part. Level two is adding the situational awareness or where, where the sensors are. So let's say we find out that the house has been broken into. And the first time it was broken into, it was broken into, they broke into the window in the kitchen. Then the second time it was broken into, a few months later, they broke into bedroom two through that window. And then the third time it was broken into, they force the door, the back door open. So what does that tell us? We have three incidents where 05 was hit, 
08 was hit and 06 was hit. These are the highest risk because we've seen them be hit. And so we would say these are our, our danger points. Well, what about 04 or 01 or 011 or 09? That's where level 4 comes in. Level 4 has many different purposes. This is the feedback loop. So with level 3, we determine that the, the highest risk sensors that we have are the ones that have been broken into. So we would do some analysis of the break-ins and take another look at our house and we might figure out that well the front door faces the street there's a lot of traffic on the street but there's a privacy fence so the privacy fence comes along and gives a lot of hidden view to the back part of the house so level four might tell us that we need to categorize some of these sensors differently from the others. So one of the things we can do, say is that 011, 01, and 02 at the front of the house are low risk. But 03 through 010 are higher risk because they're hidden they're behind the privacy fence. And we might also say 05, 08, and 06 are highest risk because they've been compromised before. Further thing in level four is, let's say our CO detector keeps going off every night. And it wakes everybody up, and we call the fire department, and they come and they do the, we, we evacuate the house like we're supposed to, because carbon monoxide is deadly, and they come in and they do the gear to detect what's going on, and they don't find anything wrong. And so we keep getting bad alerts from from our carbon monoxide detector. So we call the security company, they come out and run a test on the carbon monoxide detector and determine that it's bad. So we take that out and replace it and then that takes care of, of the uh, false alarms or the you know being woken up in the middle of the night having to call the fire department in and fearing for your life and then finding out that everything was really okay. And that's the data fusion model.